So what was your question? Um, I didn't have a question at yes, all. Yes, you did. No, I didn't. What was your stupid question? Uh, uh, I don't know what you're stupid talking about. Stupid question. You don't want to be stupid on camera? No, not really. Oh, I just make you feel stupid. The stupid question was, why do you not use a drill motor to spin your lap in your valve in instead of doing it by hand? That's a stupid question. Mm -hmm. so yeah, there's people that do that on YouTube. This lapping compound is aggressive and... This is a nice ground surface, nice and flat and true. Every time you lap this valve, you take material off wherever it hits. So if you put a power tool in there and start spinning the hell out of that damn thing, you put a big groove in there so it's no longer flat. Now you got a big low spot like that. So it doesn't seal very good and it really screws up the flow. Because anything you do to deceit is super critical for flow. So it makes a huge difference. So you know, lapping is not a way of doing stuff. Lapping is just to make sure you take the machine marks off your parts so they're more, more broken in, okay. more smoother surface. But that's only for a short term, and it starts making wear patterns. So it is not how you would do a valve job. Valve job requires cutting or grinding. Lapping is not doing that. Now, if you got no other way of doing something and it's really screwed up, it will be an improvement. But that doesn't make it good. That just means it's better than junk. So it depends on what you're trying to do. Make it good or make it junk. What about good junk? That would be called Harley Junction. <laughs> so, anyway, there's lots of different ways you can get away with stuff. But in the real world, hey, these things are not very critical to make them, to make them run, but to get good power, it takes, makes a big difference. I improve a lot of bikes by doing the work to the motors I put together. Even though I do I use all the same parts they already had in it. Yeah, nothing does not want to move over. So there's lots of different ways of doing things. That's that stupid motor behind you there. They put the motor together with way too much. No clearance in the main bearing on a Temkin. So I don't know how the motor even ran. It was so tight. It wound up being I put 7,000 thicker shim in there. And that's easy. That's about a 2 to 1 ratio between how much clearance you gain or how much thickness you take out. So I have no idea how that motor turned. It's a good thing I didn't ride it very much, otherwise, it burned it right out of it. This head's fighting me. Guess what happens when you do it in the camera where you can't normally loosen things up correctly? See, I can get there and do things like I should. Oh, it moves now. Kind of. There it goes. So I put 7,000 thicker spacer to get better clearance. At 6,000, I had clearance for like a regular bike with a new bearing. At 7th hour, I have nice, good loose clearance for high RPM use. Which is what this is being but used that's for. That's a hot rod motor. It's a 124 inch motor. So he runs a piss out of it. The right main bearing, the roller bearing, it was so damn tight, you almost could not get the case off the bearing. It was so tight. You had to really jiggle on a lot and pry on the beat on a little bit and using the weight of the motor to pull the thing up out of it. It was tight. So that bearing was all coming apart too. I don't know why, but it was. So now we loosen up both bearings. I think it turns over nice and freely now. And that makes a big difference. And when motors are put together wrong like that, things happen. Now we think that motor was put together from S and S. But they didn't put it together correctly. Somebody had a bad day that day. <laughs> so you never know. But anyway, there's different ways of doing things. So it does make a difference, the little details do matter like this here, centering this up, the closer you are to center, the more true it cuts the seat, even though it has a ball to drive on the damn thing, 
when you're off center, it, it puts a side load on it as it spins and it cuts slightly off center and that will affect your valve seat because now when the valve comes down, instead of hitting dead center, it hits on one side. Now if you had a really loose valve guide in there, it wouldn't matter, it would self-center. But if you want a nice tight guide clearance, you've got to be close in your concentric. Yes, yeah. So the more accurate you get, the more accurate you have to be and to make it work correctly. Mm -hmm. If it was really loose, like 5 6 thou in there, you could be off 30 thou up here on the seat, it would still seal. It wouldn't run as good, but it would work. If someone's just riding the bike down the road, it would run. There's a big difference between running and running good. And you can hear the difference in the bike when you start up and runs, what running good means. Whenever you start my bikes up, you can tell they're running good by the exhaust note. And if you don't know what that exhaust note sounds like, go to a racetrack someday, you'll hear it. It's real strong and crisp. Not fat and lazy sounding. Now these heads I can beat on pretty good because they're STD heads, but you got to be careful in beating on stock heads like this, you break stuff. <laughs> Bins start coming off? Exhaust ports fall off, yeah. Oh, shit. Bins start breaking, yeah, yeah, all that shit I'm beating on, yeah. Can you stop cursing in your videos? The what? Stop cursing in your videos. Did I curse? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I don't hear it when I do it. Uh, oh well. Put me on the spot earlier. I'll get in trouble. The YouTube police will be on me again. They care about that. They just started a new function uh, uh, last week, early in the week here. I was trying to load videos quickly because I want to get some damn sleep. So they, uh, they have two new features that you have to deal with. So you have to self-diagnose if you got if your videos are clean or not. And then they check them. And I had a good track where it would be 100% accurate, even though they, they do manual reviews and do computer reviews. So they do about, on my stuff, they do about, uh, on the 50 videos, they did like five or six reviews. So it's like a 10%, 10-12% review factor to check you out and make sure you're accurate. So I'm marked on the high accuracy level, which is the highest level I got, so they trust me now. Whoopee. So now you go through another stage, you gotta put, after you put down, you don't, you don't have anything wrong in your video, you have to go put a test, and you have to get it manually, you have to go back and test it, and it, waits, it takes about two minutes to run their computer test. So they don't really trust you, they make you manually test it. Still do it either, so right? now you have to do it. So now I gotta wait two minutes before I can go on the next level. So now there's uh, I think there's seven levels now to list the video. <laughs> seven pages of stuff you gotta do. When do I get no sleep? Oh, I didn't get this over. See if I can figure what I'm doing. So yeah, it gets more and more complicated every time they want to do more crap. So we had to do that one. There's one other one at the end that I can make you do too. There's another something on cards or some stupid thing, whatever that is, and I don't do it. It's more advertising crap. There's enough of that junk in there already, I don't need more of that. All that paid subscription type crap they're trying to do, I guess. And, uh, I can't pay attention to all the stuff they want you to do anymore. I know that I want to go to sleep and it won't let me. Don't we all? Yeah, and then everybody gets pissed and moaned about, oh, there's no new video this week. Hey, what's waiting so long? It's been three days since you said anything. You start having withdrawal symptoms from not watching my videos, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, maybe I got something to do, you know. That's what I should do. You know, I like to sleep every now and then. It's still going to be very far, but not far enough. Can I go one more out? Or are you good? No, I already moved it all the way in. I don't go any further now. I guess that's what it wants to be at. Okay, I want to make sure I got my head. This is the one I'm going to cut first. We've got to make sure this one's square. Okay, that one's good. 
See, this one I can cut the ID I don't care about because it's just a rough cut. It doesn't have to be dead nuts. So if it's off by a couple thousand, I ain't going to kill me. The seat does matter. So now I'm going to bore this one out to the other size cutter, which was this one. I'm going to put more air in the intake. I'm going to put more air in the exhaust. Yeah, how different these two heads are. I think it'd all be the same, but they're not. This side right yeah. here. You get rear ends by that tripod? Yep, every single time. Watch out for that guy back there. <laughs> All right, so now we're going to cut the <coughs> exhaust. Cut his preset already again. Clean the very outside edge. There's last place to clean. Yep, it's all in there now. The top cuts barely in there. So we're trying to keep these valves as high as we can, so we don't cut any more we have to. This one.
come out deep water. Top cut on it. Nothing to cut. Thought there was a lip there, but didn't see anything. See the marker disappeared right on top here. Oh yeah. As soon as I see the marker, oh, we're done. Because <laughs> the seat's right under it. The yeah, seat's yeah. right on the other side of the red line there. Same on this one here. You can see as soon as I hit hit the seat on here, you stop. So this is timed where it hits. It has a little bit of a flat spot on here. I don't know if you can see it, but when you get to the, exactly the right spot, it'll leave a mark on the seat, and you know you're deep enough. So see how much metal is not here. Yeah. That would be here if you use my cutter. That's just all lost compression. Because, because of what they use. And this here flows, this cutter works, you know, it flows good air. So having that extra cutout is actually a negative because it's like having to go to a big dip in the road to get out and run your bow. It slows you down. The air doesn't want to be moving around. It wants to go nice and straight like a funnel. Not go over dips in the road. You can always smooth that out too, right? No, it's, it's already cut. Well, all of them. I mean, machine never sink the valves way down. I'm not gonna sink the valves down. It makes the flow worse. You know, if you put big high lift cams in here or do a few valve jobs, eventually we'll go down and start picking that up. But that cutter is thirty thou, forty thou up in the air. You got to cut down that far before it catches. So that'd be a big difference. Yeah, you know, but at some point it would clean. Yeah, but. Not worth it. Compound there, you know, so now it's laps a little easier. It'll go a longer way. No, uh, you still use just as much. Actually, you use probably a little less because it's uh, smoother. Front. When winter time comes around, this stuff gets real thick, doesn't thick, want to work. Yeah. You start using more of it. The biggest thing is I don't want to lap as easy because my stick's worn out. Good thing we were, we're in spring now. Oh yeah, it's so nice and warm in here now. Yeah, I can tell. It is warmer than the other day, though. It's not as warm as we went to the mountains. It's 38 degrees. 38 degrees. Warm it to 41 before it dropped down to 35. Kind of warm. Then it gets all numb. It might be a little bit more cooler up there. One thing about the mountains is cooler and hotter. <laughs> Colder in the winter and warmer in the summer. <laughs> nice combo, huh? Yeah, right. So you hear the lapping compound die, die out. Quit lapping. It did its job. There you go. See the same thing. Good. 
you can see it right in there. You look around the circle and you look around that one, you see the same thing. Look all the way around. Mm -hmm. You can take it right above you can see it too. What's your arm? I'll take them off. Move on to the good set, your set. What year is that one? 73. 73 panhead? No. Shovel. It's panhead. With a panhead top end. It's shovel that fat, it's fat head now. <laughs> it's turned into a real bike. <laughs> Moving from a shovel head to a pan. That's what it kind of looks like because it, it's actually just the gate heads here. There's still shovel ports in those heads, so it's all the same. Alright, we'll be back.